So this video is the first time that I could find one anywhere on YouTube that shows exactly how to replace the control arms on a Toyota. This covers three cars, a Toyota Corolla IM or a Scion IM from 2016 to 2018. It also covers the Lexus CT200H and the Scion TC2. All three of these cars have the same rear suspension. So if you want to be able to adjust your camber or you've lowered it um, and you the car comes with control arms that you cannot adjust camber, uh, my problem was is that I was wearing out the inside of my tires prematurely and I didn't want to do that. So by doing this, um, you can adjust your camber and not do that. So there are videos that only show the outer bolt. They don't show the inner bolt. They just flash and they show the part installed. So I was bound and determined to figure out the best way to do this. So I am going to do this video and this was a lot of learning this was a lot of trials and tribulations doing this video but i'm going to edit it in a manner and show you the right way to do it the way i learned how to do it the best way i learned how to do it and then i'll show you some of the <laughs> things i went through learning how to do it so um there, the passenger side is easier because there's a, not a cover underneath the car, but at the same time, it's not hard to remove the cover. So, um, and the biggest thing about this is when you're on the inner, the inner connection where the nut and bolt is, loosen the bolt, not the nut. So, the bolt will loosen pretty easily and you have better access to it. So I also found that, at least on my car, the nut never even moved. So I was able to loosen the bolt and the nut didn't, didn't even budge until it was, you know, everything was starting to get loose. So um, those are some tricks and it actually makes the job pretty easy. Um, but those were things I didn't realize in the beginning. So let me show you how this is and how it works so that anybody out there can do this also and do it to their car. And now mine behind me now has adjustable control arms so I can adjust the camber on the back wheels. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to get going on, the, on this. I'm going to edit this up and show you how to do it so you can do it for yourselves. Don't pay people to do this. It's not that hard once you'll see how to do it. So this is what I bought. I've got a pair of these. So here's the adjustment right here, which will, will allow me to adjust the camber for it. And I will show you real quick the issue I think that a lot of people have trying to get this and it's just, it's getting to it is the problem. Now I will preface this, that having a lift um, or getting the car up so you have some room to work under it is gonna be a help here. So here's our control arm right here. So now getting to this side of it is easy. So taking the wheel off, you can get to that bolt quite easily and I'll have to do that. That's not the problem. The problem is the inner bolt. There's the nut right there. So it's getting to that nut that is the big problem. So that's what we're gonna try to do. So the plan is I'm gonna try to get to that, loosen that nut so that I have the ability to get that off and get that bolt out of there. Here we are on the passenger side and you can see our control arm right here. 
So the nut is still hidden right up here. So I'm still going to use the um, the S wrench that I bought to get on it. But I can get to the bolt. The bolt is right here. So there's nothing in the way for me seeing it and, uh, and getting to it. It is amazing how hard it is to see up here in this, where this nut is. It's tricky because of that shroud that they put around it. <clears throat> okay. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. The nut's not even moving. So here's the key. <laughs> so here is the key to getting these off and I will reinstate it. The nut on the first one, I was trying to loosen the nut because that is normally what you do. You don't loosen the bolt, you loosen the nut. So this time though, because the nut is so tricky to get to, I just, I wanted to try and see if the bolt would loosen easier and guess what it does. And I thought of that when I was doing the other one after I took off that plastic cover and I could finally see the bolt. That's when I had that kind of epiphany uh, of trying that. So when you're doing this, guys, um, take off this cover on the IM. Now, if you've got a CT200H or a TC2, um, you know, if they both have the cover on the driver's side rear, take that off also. If they don't, you're going to see the bolt. On the passenger side, you're going to see the bolt. That was much, much easier and much more obvious that the bolt is right here. Um, so it is right here, 17 millimeter, very, very easy so to get to. Um, and the driver's side is not horribly difficult. It's a little, little tighter in there. Passenger side is wide open. There's so much space right here. It's just insane how much space you have. Man, this makes this job a lot easier. So loosen the bolt and save yourself just a ton of headache. Here's the outer edge where the bolt goes through. Can you see that? So, um, but you see how it's perpendicular right now? So, and that's because the tire's on the ground and it's not up in the air. As you jack that up and stuff, that's where that whole suspension wants to torque and stuff. Um, and it, it makes it a little more difficult because this is welded right here. And so it doesn't pivot like the aftermarket one does. The aftermarket one pivots because it's got that adjustment in it. So I just wanted to point that out. So we are over to the passenger side now. So here's our bolt. And if you can tell, you can see how this now, because the tire is off, so the suspension is hanging. See how it's torqued? See how it's, let's see if I can show it. See how it's tilted instead of it being vertical like this, it's like this. See that compared to the bolt? So I'm gonna go ahead and put my jack under this and jack it up to take some of that pressure off of that. I'm going to use the same T200 
technique here as I did underneath. And when I tightened the other side, I left the nut alone and I just worried about the bolt end of it. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm taking a little bit of the pressure off. So let's see if this helps. at that. Because this is torqued on there, I'll, I'm sure I'll have to use my pry bar like I did before. Using this jack took a little bit off, but I can still see how it's it's not perfectly um, lined up with it. It's still at an angle to to this, so I'll just get the pry bar and pop it out like I did last time. I need my flashlight. You notice how whenever you need something, it's never near it. Oh, there it is. So, let's see if I can. Yeah, oh, it is not, it is not moving. Oh, that's good. And I can see the, I can see the bolt backing out of it. Beautiful. See, it has these little serrated edges right here so it really bites into this piece right here so and uh, but then once once you get that out then you really get some then this can tar and see that other bolt came right out so and I actually heard the nut fall out and land I didn't hear it hit cement. I heard it hit the metal, so I think it landed somewhere on the lift. So, but, look at that. <laughs> that was so much easier than the first one. You learn a lot when you go through it the first time. And like I said, without the cover on this, I could see everything. And one thing that you can, oh, there's a perfect angle here. <laughs> you can see the rust that kind of do that and built up on there. I took my drill with a wire brush and uh, I cleaned that up so that the new one would slide in there better. So, uh, perfect. So this is what I use to do that. So, and you can see how much better that looks now. And I did it on this surface too, on this side. I don't care so much about this, but just where that new, new piece will slide down into here. Uh, I am going to do the same thing I did on the other one. So I put the bolt in on this side, on the inside piece. And what I wanted to do is I want to um, I made this one full turn longer, so let me spin this out here to where it lines up exactly. So 
there I have, I'm going to go one half to make sure. Okay, yeah, no, so that's, so that's too far. It doesn't go drop down into it. So if I check it and go back in a half a turn. Okay, so that is the exact same length right there. So go ahead and pull this out. And I'm going to go one full rotation. So theoretically, that should bring the top of the tire out a little bit and lessen my camber so that I'm not wearing my inside edge quite as much. So, okay. this. Hey, Dad. And we're through. We are through. Okay. I just got to find that nut. <laughs> Guess what? Wow. Guess what? I got it. Now, since I've got my finger on that nut. I want to see if I can get the bolt kind of uh, oh yeah oh yeah Nice. Not super tight, but it's snug. So now I can work on getting this down into its home. Getting that bolt through there. And continuing on the passenger side here. So just Put back the bolt into the outer part of the control arm. So just did that, got this put in. It is hand tight right now. So with the nut here and the inside one is also hand tight. So I just need to tighten those up and then this will be completely finished. There is no cover on the passenger side down here. So that will literally finish this off. And then we'll be able to put the tire back on and check the camber. So what I'll need to do though is kind of um, pull it off the rack so I can move it, drive it, let the suspension settle and the wheel settle so I can actually check it. Now, these, what this does is if you are changing or adjusting, should I say, the camber, then you will have to take the tire off and then loosen this. These are both 17s here. And pop this out. And then slide this up so that you can adjust this piece right here. So, because here's the threads. So, and then you will turn. If you are trying to get more camber, you will turn it clockwise. 
So this will turn in and it will take the top of the tire and go this direction in so you'll get more camber. If you've got too much camber, you'll want to turn counterclockwise and it'll straighten out the tire more. So, but I'm going to go ahead and get all these things tightened up, get the tire on, and we will call this job complete other than fine tuning the alignment. Tire is back on. <clears throat> Everything's out. Got my little mini ramp, and that's just so I can get a jack underneath this. So, this is really cool though. I've never had one of these before. And uh, this is, uh, I've always wondered about it, but it is kind of, kind of cool how it works if you got an air compressor. So I'm going to show you what I have MacGyvered here. I have a 17 millimeter wrench on the nut, and this is a, an S-shaped wrench. I was able to find this at Harbor Freight, and it's the only one I could find that actually kind of gets around the metal lip that's around the nut and, and falls into the gap. Now, I want you to know, I was literally hanging on this and it still didn't break it loose. That sucker's on there. So, I have this come along. And so, I was trying to think of a way that I could use it to get some tension and pull on this wrench. So, I clipped it onto there. I actually ran a, put a screwdriver here so it wouldn't push didn't want it pushing on this uh, <clears throat> brace here and bending it. And then I ran this over to the other side of this wheel. All I gotta do is get it to break loose. If it'll break loose, I'll be in business. So I'm gonna give it a shot. Okay, let's slowly try to put some pressure on this. Like how tight is that thing on there? <laughs> oh shoot! This thing, that thing. Oh, that thing slid off, didn't it? Oh, it's on there a little bit. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> wow. I still don't think it even broke loose with all that tension on it. no idea what those things are torqued to, but geez louise. Oh, guess what? Guess what? Oh, I, I did. I got it broken loose. I got it broken loose. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it worked. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> My little, my little setup. 
worked because I was able to get this S-wrench on there. Oh yeah, oh yeah, there we go. Yes, so this is the, this was the trick right here. I was able to get a good seat around the nut and then get enough leverage. So now this is real easy to see. So here's the control arm. Real easy to get to this point. So both sides of it. The trick was getting way up under there. So and just trying to access that and being able to turn it, which I finally did. So once we get this sucker out right here with no adjustment, we'll get the new one in with adjustment. I'm, I'm going to take off this, this panel right here, this, this lower little tray, because it'll give me better access and I can see, I finally got the nut off. So the 17 millimeter nut, and I can see the other end of the bolt. Can you see it right there? I can see the other end of the bolt right there. Because I think I'm going to have to slide the bolt out to be able to get the other end of the control arm out. And if I can get this tray out of the way, then it'll make that a lot easier. And there's, there's a couple of 10 millimeter bolts and a couple of clips and stuff. So I don't think it'll be very... Alrighty, I got the lower panel off here. Kind of sure frees up a lot there. And here is, there's the, there's the bolt, the top of the bolt. So you see one of the 10 millimeter studs that held on that piece. And I will say the, the driver's side that I'm doing first is much more difficult. Looking at this from underneath the car, the passenger side is much more open. It doesn't have, have this casing under. Now that the inner part up in here is the nut is off and without that plastic piece all in the way right here, I can actually reach around and feel the bolt with my hand right here. So, and I got a um, ratchet on it and backed it out some. So, in fact, I can actually feel my, I can feel pulling on it right now. So, once I get some play in this and taking this off, so here's the, here's the outer end right here. So, here's my bolt and my nut right here. So, go ahead and see if we can get that off. See if we can get the sucker broken loose here. Oh yeah, there it goes. Okay, good. Good deal. Good deal. Feel it getting easier there. There we go. So to get this end out, I'm putting a pry bar in here and sing it under under there. And there we go getting some leverage up on it there. And there we go. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm hoping... 
Oh yeah. <laughs> you can see though how, see how this is, see how this is torqued? Oh, okay. I just had an idea. I just had an idea. So what I can do to make this easier to get in and out is put some pressure on this. I can use my other little light jack to get up under this and just to lift this up so it's perpendicular. Yeah, okay. I didn't even think about that, but and that'll probably help this too. And that takes the pressure off of that, uh, off of this bolt. Ah, here comes the bolt. There's the inner bolt. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Something that I have not seen anybody else do on YouTube. Nobody could do a video showing how to get this off. I was so determined to do it. Look at that. There is the non-adjustable. Let me pull this back a little bit here and I will show you the difference. Okay, look at this. So, so there's the adjustable and there's the non-adjustable. Yeah. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I am so psyched. So psyched. Yeah. Now you can see the whole shaft here. The whole area where that goes. Boy, what a bear, but it is off. After putting this back together, guys, this is, this is probably how I would attack this. There's the socket actually on the bolt. Here is on the other side, I've got my S wrench right here, right there. So on the nut and I would attack it from this way to loosen that and uh, see if you can get a big breaker bar on it, on the bolt side of it and see if you can break it loose that way. Um, that's what I'm going to try on the other side. So we'll see if it works better. It worked great for tightening it up. Alrighty folks, I have secured the adjustable control arm on the inside. That's where I left off. So now I need to go ahead and get this bolt through. So to help me out with that, um, what I did is I grabbed one of my really old jacks and I just kind of put it up under the arm just to help lift the suspension up. Now, one nice thing about this is because this is adjustable right here, you can actually swivel the angle to this piece right here um, and get it lined up easier than the stock one, which is not, you can't get that angle in, so there's a little more torque on it, um, which made it, when I was getting it out, made it a little harder to get out, I had to get a little more pressure with the pry bar to pop it out. Um, but this also, by lifting with this here, it also helps, as this lifts, it gets that angle straighter. As it drops, it's more like this. So as it comes up, it gets more <clears throat> vertical. So, but you can see I've got it down now in the, in the piece. So now I just need to 
try to get this lined up so that the, and I'm close, so I can get my screwdriver in. So, okay. So let's see if my bolt will go in. Oh, I'm close. I am close. I need two hands though to do this, so let me fiddle with this. And really what it is, is putting pressure on this and then just kind of fiddling with this to get to shimmy this. And then once it slides in, you're golden. When I said it was close, it was close. I mean, it didn't want to go. And then I barely moved this and all of a sudden, boom, it went through. So it's all the way through. It's sticking out the other end. So now I put the nut on. And don't forget to make sure that you get this piece that goes over that. And put the nut on and tighten that down. And this will be, this will be done. So the one thing I was noticing though is to adjust this. Um, and I, I wish, I wish that it, you didn't have to undo this, but you actually have to undo this bolt right here and then lift this up so that you can turn this um, with those threads here and then put it back in and then stick the nut back in or the bolt back through. So, which really isn't that big of a deal. Um, but so I, I undid this by one full rotation to make it uh, a little bit longer. I don't know how much. Uh, that is, but I'm going to do one full rotation on both sides and then I'll check the camber and see what it is. Well, would you look at that? Completely installed. And for the first time on YouTube, this video will be able to show people how to do the whole thing. I was bound and determined to be able to show people. So that is it. So all I need to do is I need to raise this up. I need to put the little cover shield on that goes underneath here and, um, and then put the wheel back on and we can switch over to the other side. Here is the under panel piece that I need to put back on. And whenever I have something like this off, I always clean it out. Um, you know, there was all kinds of dirt and rocks and stuff like that on the other side of it. So wash it off and stuff and uh, give it a fresh lease on life just to make it look a lot nicer and get all that uh, dirt and debris out of it. All right, guys, I'm hoping that uh, this video really helps out a lot of you. Um, I tried to really do this and do as much detail as I, as I could to share and help everybody if you choose to go ahead and um, install some of these adjustable control arms. Um, once again, these will fit uh, three different cars that I know of. Um, if there's any other cars that have the same rear suspension, um, sh please uh, <clears throat> let me know in the, in the comments and stuff um, but it is the 2016 Scion IM, the uh, 17 and 18 Corolla IM, the Scion TC2 and the Lexus CT200H. So those three vehicles all have the same rear suspension. So <clears throat> um, I had never done this before on this vehicle and I couldn't find a video that showed how to do this. So it was a complete learning experience. Um, I hope that it helps in the video. Um, I, I learned how not to do it and I learned the best way to do it. And I did show both those ways. So kind of in summation, make sure that you loosen the, the nuts or I mean loosen the bolts, sorry about that. Loosen the bolts, not the, not the nut. That's what I tried to do the first time. Um, and it's, it's much easier. So it, it's really not that difficult loosening the bolts. So 
um, do that uh, and you can reach it a lot easier the one uh, the one side has the cover on it and so please remove that the driver's side has the cover and uh, other than that as long as you can get it up in the air that's really the key is getting it up in the air um, if you're doing it on your back boy that's that that that's going to be a little harder but if you can get up in the air um, you should be okay so I hope that uh, I hope it helps please reach out to me if you have any questions or comments or anything <clears throat> um, this was an interesting video to do but I really wanted to do it to help people because I saw in some of the comments on videos that did not show how to do this that people were frustrated that they didn't show the process so I wanted to help out everybody and uh, questions or comments please reach out and I'll answer them I do try to look at everything and go from there um, please <clears throat> like and subscribe share and uh, we'll go from there so until next time guys we'll see you down the road thanks once again